In the vast expanse of space, where the laws of physics reign supreme and the limits of human endurance are constantly tested, there is one man whose story stands out above all others. His name is Sergei Krikalov and he spent a mind-boggling 311 days stuck in space. Imagine being trapped in a metal can hurtling through the void with nothing but your wits and your training to keep you alive. No fresh air, no sunlight, no contact with loved ones. For Krikalov, this was his reality as he orbited the Earth at an altitude of over 400 kilometers or 250 miles aboard the Mir space station. But Krikalov's story is more than just a tale of survival in the harshest of environments. It's a testament to the human spirit, the power of dedication, and the sheer awe-inspiring wonder of space travel. Join us as we delve into the incredible journey of Sergei Krikalov and the lessons he learned in space. Our story begins in Leningrad, a city in northwestern Russia. There, a young Sergei Krikalov had just completed his training at the Leningrad Mechanical Institute. With a degree of mechanical engineering in his hands and the world at his feet, Sergei soon got a job at Energia, a corporation that was responsible for building Russian rockets and space stations. He quickly rose through the ranks, and by 1985, Krikalov was selected as a cosmonaut candidate. To attain his cosmonaut wings, Krikalov traveled to the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, where he underwent extremely rigorous training for survival in space, a training that would come in handy for his future missions. Sergei Krikalov's first mission to space was as a flight engineer aboard the Soyuz TM-7, which launched on November 26, 1988. The mission was designed to deliver a crew to the Mir space station, where they would conduct experiments and do research. Krikalov's first mission lasted for 151 days, during which he conducted various experiments. He also performed maintenance and repair tasks on the Mir space station, along with his commander, Alexander Volkov, and French astronaut Jean-Luc Chrétien. Krikalov's first mission to Mir was notable for being the first time a crew had stayed on the space station for an extended period of time. You could say it was especially significant for Krikalov, as it was on this mission that he met his future spouse, Yelena Terekina. The two had been communicating over the radio, and just from hearing her voice, our man fell in love. His first mission was a resounding success, and it paved the way for longer duration missions in space. It contributed to our understanding of the physical and psychological effects of long duration space flight on humans. As Krikalov's feet touched Earth, he began preparations for a second mission, a mission that would change his life in the future of space travel. He also decided to marry Yelena, and she conceived before Krikalov took to the skies again. Mir was a Russian modular space station that orbited Earth from 1986 to 2001. It was the largest artificial satellite in orbit, and it played a major role in human space exploration. The name Mir means peace in Russian and the station was designed to be a symbol of international cooperation and scientific progress. Throughout its lifetime, the Mir space station hosted numerous scientific experiments and technological innovations, including the first long-duration human space flight, the first commercial space program, and the first joint American-Russian space mission. Krikalov returned to Mir for a second time with Anatoly Artsy-Barksy and Helen Sharman, the first British astronaut. The crew set off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, located in what is now Kazakhstan. You'll want to remember this part for later. Krikalov's second mission to the space station had a dual purpose. His primary goal was to conduct scientific experiments and research, while his secondary one was to provide logistical support and maintenance to the space station. Almost like a warning of things to come, before Krikalov and his crew could dock on the space station, they encountered a major problem. The targeting system of the Soyuz spacecraft failed. This meant that they would have to dock manually, without any guidance system. An extremely difficult task that could have fatal consequences if not performed perfectly. However, Krikalov quickly took control of the situation. Even though one wrong move would have led to certain death, our man steered the crew to safety and they were able to board Mir. The team was greeted by two astronauts that were already on board. And eight days later, these two astronauts, along with Charmin, left for Earth. 
leaving only Krikalov and Artsy Barksy aboard. The pair would have to go on to complete six extravehicular activities, or EVAs, and keep things running on Mir. Though a marvel of engineering, Mir wasn't exactly a five-star vacation suite. What comes to your mind when you think of a space station? Chances are, you imagine a perfectly clean and sterile environment, immaculately organized and equipped with all the latest instruments. Well, Mir was quite the opposite. One thing astronauts always talked about was the stench. British chemist Stephen Pierce described it as a mixture of sweaty feet, nail polish remover, body odor, and vodka, among other things. The extremely putrid scent was thought to be a result of all the bacteria and fungi that were thriving on the ship. Mir also had a lot of technical issues. For one, the lights on the space station were always flickering at random intervals. This was a big problem because not only was this failing equipment responsible for powering the lights, it was also responsible for keeping everyone on board alive. Aside from the smell and technical difficulties, astronauts constantly had to deal with other struggles that came with living in space. For example, they had to perform routine exercises to keep their muscles from atrophying due to lack of gravity. Astronauts can lose up to 20% of their muscle mass in space within only a week or two. And it was in these highly unfavorable conditions that Krikalov would have his already long mission extended with no end in sight. As Mir orbited Earth, Krikalov could see all the wonders of the world in an instant, but what he couldn't see was the Soviet Union falling apart. Remember we said that he was able to communicate with his wife through the radio? Well, she and Margaret E. Aquinto, an amateur radio enthusiast, were the ones feeding him the unbiased information on the state of things back on Earth, and what was now Russia. The Soviet Union had broken up into what felt like a million pieces, and the last thing on anyone's mind was a cosmonaut more than 400 kilometers or 250 feet above the Earth. The only thing ground control could do was to inform Krikalov that his mission had been postponed indefinitely. As a result, the supplies to Mir dropped, and Krikalov had to make do with the limited amount of food, water, and even air available in the space station. Almost everything was out to kill this guy. With all this, he still had to deal with the emotional and psychological stress that came with the events surrounding him and his family. A lot was happening back home, and he wasn't there to help his wife or his now nine-month-old daughter. As you can imagine, being stuck on Mir during all this upheaval and uncertainty must have left Krikalov disheartened. While the option to return to Earth using an emergency Soyuz craft docked on Mir was always available, Krikalov knew that leaving the space station would have meant certain destruction of Mir and all the work that had gone into it. He was the only one holding it all together. And as if things weren't bad enough, Krikalov also had to endure seeing several visiting astronauts from other nations come to and leave the space station while he remained, like the captain of a sinking ship. By December 1991, the Soviet Union had dissolved into 15 different countries, and both Krikalov and his very recently placed commander, Alexander Volkov, were now part of a space program that no longer existed. Worse, the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the launching point for the Soviet Union's space program, was now part of Kazakhstan, and it was unclear how friendly this new nation would be to the cosmonauts. The men were no longer Soviet citizens. Were they even Russians? Krikalov's hometown wasn't even called Leningrad anymore. It was now St. Petersburg. Talk about turning your head for five seconds, only to find your entire world changed. It wasn't until late January 1992 that Krikalov and Volkov received fresh supplies. At long last! These supplies meant there was a hope for a return. Even with all the turmoil that plagued their home country and mission, Krikalov and Volkov continued work as usual. How incredible! Their commitment almost spelled doom for Volkov when one time during an EVA, Volkov's spacesuit fogged up and the cosmonaut was rendered blind while outside the space station. Once again, the ever cool headed Krikalov calmly resolved the situation and led his commander safely back into the space station. By March 1992, Germany had completed negotiations in the amount of $24 million to send one of their astronauts to Mir. On March 17, 1992, Klaus Dietrich Flood boarded the Soyuz TM-14 and became the first German astronaut in space. With the money generated in this negotiation, Russia was able to finally send an appropriately trained engineer to replace Krikalov. He was finally coming back to Earth. When Krikalov landed in what had officially become the nation of Kazakhstan, he was visibly worn out. Reporters said he looked pale as flour and sweaty, like a lump of wet dough. 
but he was happy. He was back on Earth and could see his wife again, and his daughter for the very first time. Krikalov described the feeling of returning to Earth as similar to being a newborn baby. He had to relearn how to move and walk. All his muscles and bones had weakened significantly during his stay in space. However, despite the physical challenges, Krikalov was overjoyed to be back on Earth and reunited with his family and friends. This had only been his second mission to space, and during that one mission, Krikalov spent 311 days and 5,000 orbits around the Earth as the sole engineer with the technical know-how to keep the space station going. In interviews after his return, Krikalov spoke about a sense of awe and wonder that he had experienced during his stay in space. He described looking down at the Earth from Mir and feeling a profound sense of connectedness and unity with all of humanity. However, he also spoke about the challenges of living in space, including the isolation and loneliness that he experienced at all times. What's perhaps most amazing is that even after this ordeal he faced on his second mission, Krikalov still went on multiple missions back to space. He was the first Russian to travel on an American spacecraft and the first to reside on the International Space Station. Throughout his career, he spent a total of 803 days, 9 hours, and 39 minutes in space, completing 8 spacewalks. Krikalov's experience on Mir also had a significant impact on his career. He went on to become one of Russia's most accomplished astronauts, eventually serving as the head of the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center and working on several more space missions. He now serves as Executive Director of Human Spaceflight for the Russian Space Agency. If you had faced all that Krikalov did aboard Mir, would you have ever agreed to return to space? Let us know in the comments!